Hi guys, Jeb here with Earth and Turf. We're gonna be talking about our vineyard unit. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and show you what we're looking at. Uh, I've got it out in the field, quite literally. And I wanted to explain some of the connection points. Uh, if you've not run one before, you know, the hydraulics are a little bit different than some other spreaders. A lot of spreaders out there are PTO driven. And so I figured I'd go over some of the controls and everything just to make it clear. So first thing we're gonna be looking at is, I'm gonna come right in here. You got two lines that run down the side of the unit. This is the model 320V, which would be similar to the 320H and the 220 series in the H. Uh, just means that it's hydraulically driven. So we're gonna go and look in here and check out those hydraulic fittings. Now these are smaller than most of the ones that we send out. You'll have to forgive me, it's a little hard to access here in the back of the tractor. So just a, a standard fitting, this is a smaller one, not unlike what you may have on a front end loader. So if you look over here, um, these fittings are similar. However, these ones are actually a hair bigger. So just depends on what you got. Some people run these hydraulics from the front end loader. We got the, uh, the rear option mounted. And then on most bigger tractors, you know, something that's not so small, you're gonna have the option for actual fittings for farm equipment. So that's typically what we're sending out. Um, can be complicated, doesn't really have to be. You've got one, one line out, one line back. Uh, I don't know which one's which. It depends on how you hook them up, really. So we've got those two lines. On this tractor, we have hydraulic controls right here. One goes that way and one goes this way. Uh, or I should say the same thing goes either way, depending on what you're looking for. So if you go this way, it's going to cycle the fluid, uh, let's say, for example, in this one and out this one. Uh, it depends on how they're hooked up down here. You can hook them up differently. Um, so you just got to figure out what works for yours. Some tractors I know only have one direction of flow. So you just have to work with that if that's, if that's what you have. Make sure that you hook them up in the right order that you're spreading. So we're going to come to the back of the spreader here uh, to see the controls. So you've got your hydraulic controls right here. This one, this unit's a little bit dirty. Don't mind that. Right here is going to control your main drive belt. So that controls the speed at which this belt is going to be flowing. And then this one right here is going to control the side conveyor. So that's going to control that speed. Uh, basically, you've got a, anything from zero all the way up to 10 here. You can just loosen like so, adjust it to where you like, and screw down this little, uh, I don't know what you'd want to call it, I guess a screw, cap screw, something like that, just to hold it in place. Uh, what you're going to want to do there is find what kind of projection works best for you. So I've got the rake sitting down right here. If we were looking to spread maybe that far, uh, maybe a certain volume or something like that, that's when you'd really want to tune those to exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you can make it so that it shoots further less material, shorter more material, or further more material, whatever. You've also got the end gate over here. So this one, you've got a little spring pin that you're gonna pull out. You'll have to work with me there, there we go. Uh, lock it into place and then you can see exactly how this works. Extremely simple system. So I'm gonna close this down a little bit and then I'm just gonna rotate this spring pin like so. And that'll lock back into position there. So that way the gate is fixed. That's gonna control how much flow you're actually getting out the back of the spreader. So you notice it's only gonna be spreading by volume about this much. So you can open it all the way up, you can close it all the way down. Totally again, depends on what you're actually looking for out of your spread. Other than that, there are no specific controls to be looking for. There are adjustments and everything, just like the standard 320. You've got a belt adjustment right here. You loosen your lock nut, tighten accordingly. You've got the same clean out option. So right here, you wanna make sure that your belt's got about that much play, not much more, not much less. This one's actually been run, so it's, it's adjusted already. Um, but then of course you wanna clean out under here with your pressure washer. I'll see if I can get a little bit of dirt. You don't want this dirt in here, and it's obviously loaded right now, so. That's why it's a little bit dirty. You want to be sure that you clean out that dirt. You don't want it to be sitting in there and whatever. Um, just kind of packing into this roller, packing into the belt, making a mess, and then ultimately it's going to throw your belt off a little bit. So you got another clean out back here where you can actually see the inside that's underneath, underneath the belt. So you want to keep that underside clean. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of maintenance to it. It's very simple, hydraulically driven. So I'm going to fire up the tractor, go over here. crank this up a little bit and I haven't actually test tested good okay 
So what I'm going to be looking to do here, you can see in this position that it goes the wrong way and you do not want to spread like that. That's not good for the spreader because it's going to be forcing material out right here. So I'm going to go this way and you're going to see some of the material starts to flow out the back there. So my rake needs to adjust it a little bit. In fact, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up this rear belt and then move this rake forward to catch. That way I can clean up a little bit easier so it's not piled. And then I'm actually going to grab this bungee. You can do this any assorted method. There's no fancy way to do this. I do this for cleaning, so I literally will lock this in place and let it cycle. That way I'm pressure washing and it's cycling the belt. It's easier to clean. Uh, but I'll also do this just to demonstrate how this works. So as soon as I let go on here, and then if I let this go forward, you can see that it's spitting material. And you can do anything with these. So notice if I close this, rear belt is still moving. However, the main belt is not moving, all right? Not spitting any material. Um, if I slowly move this one in, it's gonna slow that belt down. Let me give you a little bit more throttle. So we've got a little bit better flow. So that's gonna be stopped and that's at setting two. We're gonna go to three, four, five. And then all the way up into 10. At some point, you're pretty much just wide open. It's not going to change a whole lot there. And then I'm going to move this control up to maybe two. Nothing there. Then go up to about four. See, there you go. Starting your flow. Very, very light. Almost nothing coming out because of the end gate. So if I open this gate more. Uh, let's see if I can do this here. That's going to allow more flow, more material. Yeah. Making more and more mess. So really simple, a lot of options on the control. I'm going to come in here, slow down the main belt again, and all of a sudden we're not spreading. That's really all there is to it. Super simple system. Now this material is extremely wet. Like, we're talking muddy wet. So you see that... This is making a little bit of a mess, bringing the material down through, because it's, it's, hopefully you can hear me, because it's caked to the belt. So you're literally fighting the belt itself because it's caking and then swinging around and then even in the front here, it's making a mess. Let me zoom out a little bit. Making a mess because it's caked on here um, from underneath. So. That's just what happens when you run wet material. It's not going to break the unit. Something that you want to watch out for. Make sure you're effective and careful what you're doing. But nothing to be afraid of. I do want to show how these tines are grabbing the material that is foreign or shouldn't be shouldn't be involved in the spread. So you've got like some twiny looking material, maybe some plastics, depending on what kind of mushroom flow you're working with. So. They've done a good job of holding that material back and letting only the fine and siftable stuff come down, which is what gives you the best, best spread. These are the main features that you're gonna find on the 320V. Uh, some of the variants, like the 320H or the 220H with side conveyor, will be a little bit different, um, but uh, the controls will be mostly the same. I'm actually just gonna run this out in the empty field and then point out a couple of features that are important on this model. So this one has the tandem walking axle. Uh, you can see the two wheels right there and they're a little bit more stable. So I'm going to show that as well as uh, just the turning radius that you get with this. Right here you can see I'm going to pull into this dip. Uh, you can't see it super well because of the camera angle. It's not as steep as it could be. But this is loaded full and heavy, wet material. Uh, and you see that, that walking axle just handles the hill. Again, I'm going to go empty down over this little uh, berm here. This is just in the material yard. And you can see how that axle just handles everything nice and slow, nice and stable. The tandem walking axle has two features and then two things that it's not as ideal for. So the features are, it's definitely narrower. That's only a 39 inch outside of tire to outside of tire width. So that's ideal for your tight rows. And then of course it contours your bumps and hills very well because the, the axle walks. 
However, on the downsides, it's definitely a little bit narrower, which means you're less stable on your side hills. And then of course, if you're trying to drop straight down onto a row, you don't have much of a straddle width to work with. So if you're looking to top dress and side dress, you probably wanna go with something like a single axle. If you're looking to strictly side dress, and even if you have sharp hills and everything, you may wanna look into a wider stance single axle. However, for most applications, this is ideal because it's so narrow, long, easy to back up and stable. The last question we get often is how is the turning radius, especially with that dual axle, it's a little bit wider. So if you can see here, um, I did accidentally run over my tape measure, but I'm gonna move it for this lap back tire. The turning radius is a little over 100 inches for the tractor itself. And then as I get in here with the side dresser, you're coming in right over the seven foot range. So depends on what you're working with for your rows and how much room you have to turn around and what your tractor can do. If you have any more questions or wonder which one's going to fit you best, feel free to reach out to our team here. We'd be happy to help make your decision and make sure you have the most efficient side dresser or top dresser for your application.